it's not worth to spend hours and hours of dialing in sounds. Take the time and use it for practice. That's, <laughs> that will do much better to your sound than fiddling around yeah. with the knobs. Yeah, I just Honest words. <laughs> oh, a little bit danger. <laughs> Hmm. But also our workshop. Ah. <laughs> Come in. Okay, let's start touring in, yeah. in that workshop. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, these are the um, necks and bodies. I, I get the necks and bodies from Andreas. Mm -hmm. um, he delivers in um, yeah the, the parts like this, the necks. And uh, mm -hmm. in this workshop, I um, make all the fine working on the necks. Mm. So these were the bodies I get from Andreas in, in the um, uh, second uh, occasion he he he, uh, he makes the bodies and delivers this to come like this yeah you see mm -hmm. so Ah, I, 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 now I understand. Maple, yes. light lost in the maple, yes. and the dark right. lost in the dark. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, when you have to glue um, fretboards, uh, the, the radius is, is um, um, send it before and then we glue the fretboard over the radius, mm -hmm. you know, so this, uh, this vacuum press. Ah, vacuum yeah. press. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, normally, other, other, other Lucia used to some metal tools, pressing. Yes, some, some clamps. Yeah, clamps, yeah. clamp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you used the different system. Yeah, because because of this, uh, you can see it on the neck. It's it's it's, um, it's curved. Mm. Yeah. The, the fretboard is curved. So it 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 have a, have to even pressure. Uh, same same pressure too. Yes. Ah. Yes. Okay. Normally clamp just uh, press press to small part always yeah, yeah yeah that's right but you can uh, if you put something um, between the clamp and the neck you you, you can uh, better plate uh, yes yeah, yeah, so, yeah. but but uh, when you uh, try to, to to glue it um, curved mm -hmm. so you, you need a, a vacuum press mm. so yeah so it's, it's the same system when you cover the body uh, yes. Yeah. Ah. Yes. This is uh, um, Andreas had the same um, press mm -hmm. in this work in his uh, workshop, and he does the this. Um, you see here. Hmm. It's, it's a different. Would it? yeah. Yes, it's it's different. Here's, ah. It's a um, it's, it's a thin um, uh, cover. Oh, okay. Top, yeah. This part is is all uh, the, for for sanding, sanding necks and, and, and bodies. It's, a, it's with a touching uh, some dust. Yeah, the, the dust. Is, ah, it's uh, good for filter in it, so it's good, <laughs> good for health. Yeah. yeah, good for health. Yeah. So, and this is um, we have. Uh, you see it, um, mm. So it fits for 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 the for the necks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you can uh, it's for 
cutting the thread slots. Ah. Like this. Oh. And, but it also fits on, on this uh, machine. Ah, uh, <laughs> very smart. <laughs> yeah. So this vacuum. We sent the sand to the neck, neck behind them. Uh, um, how to say the yeah neck. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So. Beside the neck uh, thickness. Yes, and 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 and, and the fret, fretboard, uh, oh, fretboard radius. Yeah. Radius. Yeah. yeah. And it also fits on. This um, here, and this is for for um, uh, thread leveling. Yeah, thread leveling. Thread leveling. When, when the Mac is uh, threaded, so solid. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and it has holes. So cannot. Tell you in English, really, but, but it's a, <laughs> okay. I it's understand it. Yeah. it. It helps to uh, fret height. Yes. Yeah. Fret yeah. leveling. Yes. Fret leveling, yeah. and uh, your neck is a compound lead you, so yeah. you need that. Okay. Yeah. It, it yes. makes it makes easier. It makes uh, easier for. for it's uh, good tools. Smart. Very smart. <laughs> yeah. And when. Um, Thread leveling is done, mm -hmm. and you can see here my CNC machine. Mm -hmm. um, the machine does all um, routings in two steps. There's mm -hmm. one. All uh, the, the front side of the neck, the dots, and, and uh, this part. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. That so, must part. Yes. Yeah. Headstock uh, leveling, and and this mm -hmm. part, and and even the the logo. Logo. It's uh, it's it's, uh, it's routed, and then um, with uh, yeah. Kit. Field, yeah. Mm. And this is um, painting room. Yeah, painting room. Here's uh, the spray gun um, painting. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's a. Um, Yeah, for the yeah, dust. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's painted. Devotion color, maybe. Hmm? This color. Yeah. This color, yeah, so it was the last one. Yeah, <laughs> I did, yeah. So. Here is uh, the painting room. Yeah. So we have some. So. It turns, so you, you don't get, uh, let's say, wafer in German. So, uh, Paint smash? Yeah, when the uh, ah, you, you because know. the liquid flowing to yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So gravity work. problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No gravity. Yeah. <laughs> so, gravity destroyer. <laughs> yeah. I, I I I didn't realize if you used the. Do you developing your own hand these tools? Yes. Oh, yes. It's all, all own development. You are. So we call it um, chicken grill. So. <laughs> chicken grill. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi. Hmm. So Hello. this is the Vincent Bass Guitarist team. Hmm. I'm Toby. This is Johannes, and this is Andreas, and the three of us. Um, we are Vincent Bass Guitarists, located in Nuremberg, Germany. So um, maybe we can introduce ourselves really quick. 
like I already started, I'm Tobias, I do the marketing stuff, I do, um, well, I'm responsible for the website and for this configurator you probably have already used it. And I also do a little bit of the artist management. So we do have this great Vincent family with all these amazing musicians and all the communication with those guys. That's, that's what I do. So I don't build the instruments. That is the job of those two amazing guys. So maybe you can... Yeah, I'm Johannes and um, I uh, do the, the production of uh, the bass guitars. And yeah, so to say, I'm the inventor of, of, of winds and guitars. I do it uh, many years. Um, and yeah, so and I did it uh, many years by myself. And now uh, we, I, I, I got some really nice partners for the business and we do it uh, yeah, all together. Yeah, my name is Andreas and Johannes and me, we are friends like from our childhood days. So, and um, we both started an apprenticeship as, um, as joiners, apprenticeship in woodworking. And um, I'm responsible also for production, especially for the bodies and all the, the wood stuff. So all the timber and all that is on my side. I would say it's a, the playability is most uh, important thing, um, yes, and, and, and the sound as well, so yeah. uh, we, we say um, with our bass guitar, this is chambering, um, it's, how to say, uh, it's more important to have a, a nice attack for the tone than, um, than the, the sustain, so it's more correct, uh, as a more character for the sound. It's important to have a, a really nice attack. So yeah. this is uh, why we did um, start with this chambering. And yeah. So I'd say a good instrument is an instrument the, uh, the player can rely on. The, a good instrument feels like a good instrument. It feels comfortable. It feels also comfortable after lots of playing, after hours of playing. So. It, the handling for the player is like the number one handling and sound, of course. But um, like there, this has consequences for us as builders because if we want to achieve the best handling, the best ergonomics, and the best sound, we can, and it has implications on how we build an instrument. And so, like for us, um, the consequences of building an instrument with the best playability, with the best sound with the best durability means that we have to focus on ways how to make this possible in an instrument. So there's a number of like innovations um, that we put into our instruments. Um, for example, we do the chambering to achieve a lightweight instrument that plays well over a long time, that doesn't hurt your back. And also the chambered body increases the attack of the instrument. So it influences the sound in a positive way and then we have a really innovative neck design with a really well working easily adjustable truss rod so whenever you have a condition like you changing humidity you go on an airplane you go to another continent and then you take the base out of the package and you say oh the neck started to react to the different climate so we have an easily accessible truss rod and we have a tool for it with the every base and you just turn the nut like a little bit and the, you can easily set up the base whenever it should react to different climate so everything that is really important to keep your instrument well playable is something you can do on the fly as a musician and you don't need a technician to set your instrument up for you uh -huh. so that was a very technical explanation yes. as you could expect from one of the builders of the instruments which leads to the conclusion, <laughs> a really good instrument talks to the musician, talks, whatever that means. So you get inspired from the instrument and you can express yourself as an artist on the instrument. You just, you know, grab the bass and then you start playing and there is no, no boundaries, nothing holds you back. You just, you can express yourself. And that's for me, what a good, and that of course, everything you said is for, like 
puts focus on the on exactly that point or that situation. So nothing is in the way between the communication of the instrument and the player. That's important. I mean, it's like the optimal optimal instrument is you take it and you immediately you play it and it sounds good. Mm -hmm. You don't have to fiddle around with settings, dial in the sound with the like active equalizer, whatever. Yeah. It's just we our instruments are, try to achieve something that you just take it, plug it in, play. It. That's yeah. it. Plug and play. Yeah. Uh, we have prepared something yeah. for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is a cut open uh, version of our standard Accurat body. And you can see down here the tone block where you can put in the ball end of the string. And you see all this like honeycomb chambering, mm -hmm. obviously like a honeycomb. And um, you can also see how uh, the veneer, uh, like the top is glued on and all that. So. It's still a very sturdy bass. Um, there is, even though those chamberings go all around, they are not like put through or like bigger chambers. Um, it's just like a honeycomb structure and it's still very sturdy. And I, we never had the situation that, you know, someone just was breaking that thing. It's light, but it's still very robust. Yeah. And wherever, wherever we need maximum stability, like in the back where the bridge is positioned and where the neck pocket is, mm -hmm. we don't do any holes, we just use the massive wood. So wherever we have parts attached to the base, we have maximum strength. Mm -hmm. And wherever we have just material all around, so we, we choose to make that honeycomb structure where we have like three millimeters on top which is massive wood. And we have also five millimeters on the back, which is massive wood. And that leads to a kind of sandwich style construction. And like these um, sandwich style constructions where you have a massive layer on top and a massive layer on bottom, and you have a lightweight um, cup structure in the middle um, that turns out to be quite sturdy and quite stiff. Like you use these kind of compound materials in airplanes, wherever, wherever you need lightweight stiff materials, you choose such a way of constructing them. So we're quite confident that these guys will hold for your lifetime and longer. Yeah, it's a good answer. So who consider to buy Vincent to A little bit worry durability. Yes, and, yes. Uh -huh. durability is a very important issue. Maybe I can I can uh, add this to. Our um, frets, for example, they are all stainless steel. They are glued in. You probably don't have to refret those necks yeah. ever again. So those bases are really built mm. for for a long, long time. The neck length, yeah. So it's uh, it's a. I I tried different um, um, uh, measures. So um, and. Uh, I came up with this uh, between it's, it's between um, 34 and 30, 35 um, inches, and this is um, because that's a, the string tension is best feeling I find. So that's um, the reason for this. Canada Ruthia F base, they do 34.5 like yours. Only two Lucia made. 34.5 inch scale in the world, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, funny thing is, uh, <clears throat> my Korean Vincent artist, uh, he, I gave one free instrument for him because of promotion, but he already had uh, 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 two Vincent bass uh, pro, pro, uh, buy from me. So I asked him, why you buy a lot of Vincent? You have all you got a three, but now he trying to buy four. So I asked him. So he said, uh, normally he played on the stage, don't look the neck. His, his sight always looking audience. So when he plays 34 inch bass and 30.5 or well, sometimes 35, he confused some feeling in there. Mm -hmm. So that is why same. Been sent to base on the stage every time, yeah. because he never looks of a fingerboard. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> so now he's to yeah. To win Can you say anything? Yeah. I mean, we've heard that, mm -hmm. especially from like 
professional professional players who play like every day or who play with different musicians and who have such a strong muscular memory that they don't have to look. Mm -hmm. And then they feel, mm, this is strange, this is something in between. But they all get used to it and maybe then they find out it's really comfortable and they don't want anything yeah, else. Yeah. No, no, we, no. We, um, we have no plans. We did some um, for partner um, with, uh, with Lola pickups, uh, a special a series, but he never asked for, for it. And we, we tried this, uh, we, we tried other pickups and we came up with this um, uh, Koisel pickups. Yeah. Fits uh, very nice to, to, our, to our constructions. Uh -huh. it makes it a little bit moder modern sound. Uh -huh. um, and we find it's, it's a, the best, um, best option for, for, yeah. for our. Also, it's a really, really nice partnership with Harry, mm -hmm. Harry Heusel. And he's doing really custom things for us, mm -hmm. like our PJ uh, basses, the, the J, like the single coil mm -hmm. in bridge position is a little hotter. It has more oh. wires than like the standard version. Now we have Pony, our short scale bass, and he did this like Mustang style pickups, especially for us. Mm -hmm. So we can come to him, you know, we can talk to him. He's a really nice guy. It's a really good partnership and we don't see any reason. Of course, there's yeah, tons yeah, yeah. of other really good pickups around. Yeah. Like you said, Topmans or Lolas. Um, I mean, of course, but we do have our partner and we are happy with the partnership. So there's no reason to change that. Mm. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, we do. So we started uh, with some metallic uh, colors. So we have a sample here. Yes. So uh, kind of um, 70s or 80s uh, car uh, uh, colors um, so we like very much so we try to yeah. um, establish this yeah colors uh, yeah there'll be this one and like a pinkish version with the yes. metallic yes um, and they will be like custom models for this year but you will learn more about that uh, on our website and on our social media later this year but there will be a few uh, models with this and the same aesthetics but with a more pinkish tone uh -huh. and they will be our custom models for 2024 and for example we also do some special series sometimes for example for special dealer partners as we did for for you the special um, oh, yeah. a metal flake that mm -hmm. we only made for you mm -hmm. and so like we have some really good retail partners and sometimes we do a special run for them in terms of college. Yes. And um, uh, uh, customizing is, is uh, with, with colors is no, no problem because it's, it's easy to realize. Um, we, we have uh, questions like, like uh, could you make uh, the neck a little bit wider or smaller or so? This is um, not in our plan uh -huh. at the moment. But, but colors is yeah, yeah. so it's good news. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So as we as we do all the finishes here in our shop, okay, um, we can react really quick to any kind of crazy ideas regarding color. Yeah. But still, we we have this really broad variety on our website and the configurator and all that, and we add like standard colors all the time. Mm -hmm. But if someone you know has an idea, we can always talk. Okay. Don't ask for matching headstocks. There will be no matching headstocks. No matching, yeah. yeah. Because, yes. because um, the That's Winston right. logo here, it's not glued, it's not taped on. It's, it's, it's not a decal. It's, an, it's not a decal. It's an inlay, and you cannot combine matching headstock with a de, uh, with an inlay. Mm. So an inlay is something really delicate, and it requires solid wood. So we will always have a headstock that matches. Uh -huh. the rest of the neck because our philosophy is the one piece neck and we want to show the philosophy uh -huh. of the plate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and one thing to the uh, one piece neck it's it's a it's a um, an oil finish, a total oil finish. There's no no lacquer on on, um, on this neck. Yeah. So it's a, it's because of the of the feeling and um, so uh, and, and this is the reason because we we make it um, with an inlay 
so we can uh, realize this oil finish. That's total oil finish. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no paint mm. on the neck. Okay. This is no something. paint on that. Yeah. No paint and on when the when you buy a Vincent, you get a, a small satchel with the with the um, with the with oil that you can use for your fretboard, and you can use it for the backside of your neck. Mm -hmm. So you can you can always um, renew your finish yourself, with the, and there is no lacquer that will wear down. Uh -huh. You can keep your neck as smooth and clean, like on the first day with all the stuff that comes with your Vincent okay. base. Okay, I suddenly one thing ask to you. That oil is it special because I already use empty. My bottle is empty, so you yeah, will get, get the new one. one. <laughs> ah. And I think after two years we changed the oil. In yes, the beginning it, it was balisto oil. Yes, um, and now it's something no, it's more a, like a, uh, citric. Like it's a, it's a, a natural oil, total natural, natural oil. Natural oil. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, maybe we can just send Chang Yong a bigger bottle and yes. then you can ah, sell yeah. refills. <laughs> 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 okay, good idea. No yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, there's an, I think there's an issue with, with, with um, fretboard material, um, this environmental uh, uh, discussion. Yeah, so, and we have, um, um, how to say, uh, someone, he, he delivers us, us with, with, uh, with his catalogs, it's a, it's a certified wood. So it's um, yeah. So it's not as bad for the environment as rosewood. Yes, yes. It's like the eco-friendly version of rosewood, but it has pretty much the same. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's a little bit harder. Even harder. Even harder. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, several years ago, and I find it's a, it's a very nice material for fretboards. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we have to show something here. Because I think this is really important because we get this question a lot um, about material and also how the sound um, or how the yes. material um, has an impact on the sound. And maybe you can see it here, how thin, and we don't even call it fretboard because it's not a real board, it's more like a veneer. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, you should show it from this side too. Oh yeah, so very, it's, very thin. It's, it's very thin, thin. It, it is and very it's not thin. a massive slab that it's shaped mm -hmm. afterwards, but it's um, it's really, it's like a veneer and it follows the radius. Yes. So it's like it's two millimeters all over the, the, the board. You can see it here also. Mm -hmm. It's just a thin layer and um, with every flat uh, uh, fret slot, you cut it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the material, of the fretboard or of the veneer doesn't influence the physical behavior of the neck. The neck acts like a one-piece neck and the fretboard is more or less decoration or just like for durability and for like like also your personal taste yes. of course but um, it's not like on a traditional neck where you have like a six millimeter fretboard glued on top which really influences heavily the sound and also influences the way your neck bends when uh -huh. uh, humidity changes. Uh -huh. yes. So this is a solution where really the behavior of the classical one-piece neck is stays intact yeah. even when we put an olive or a catalog on it. Oh, yeah. The question be, uh, why olive? Yeah, so um, I like olive wood <laughs> very much so I, I tried and um, with this con construction um, because olive wood is not not very um, um, how to say uh, flexible. Yeah, it it it, it it's, um, it tends to bend. It tends to bend, mm -hmm. but with but with this technique, um, you have you have very small olive uh, um, uh, parts because it's it, 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 with a with a fret nut you you cut the the, the wood on, on, on each. Mm -hmm. um, we try to use this olive wood and we, we do it um, several years now yeah. and we have no problem no problems. at all. And, and it's just really beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Also, so, yeah it looks yeah. very beautiful. So from the physical perspective, it's still a one-piece neck and this is more or less cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And olive is just really beautiful. So it's just <laughs> really beautiful cosmetics. <laughs> yeah. Can you show me uh, backside of neck because it, it, it easily explain to you how how strong is that neck, that part? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot because of uh, many company don't install that uh, metal part. 
Yes. Yes. So. so yeah. Um, yeah, it's because I think. Um, I mean, we started with outdoors, maybe like the first 20, 30 instruments. And then Without, you, yes. And, and then and you started putting those in. Yeah. Um, I think when you don't, if you don't take your bass apart like 20 times, if you put it together like one time, maybe two times, maybe three times, it's not that problem. But when you want it like to have a really good connection between the neck and the body, um, and I really don't know what those metal things are called in English. Hülsen. Not pushings. 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 Yeah. Pushings. Yeah. Ah, okay. There yeah. you go. And that's maybe also regarding durability. Mm, so yeah. this will work in 20 years, in 30 no, years, in 40 will, years. This will last forever. This will yeah. last forever. Yeah, maybe I can give Vincent the bass with grand, grandson. <laughs> yeah. 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 The other generation can use just the one bass. So. <laughs> And the another another reason is because in, in our production process um, I, I uh, um, fix or, or, or position on, uh, on my chicks very um, often with with his um, screws there and so uh, so during the production process uh, I, I need a, a stable uh, connection. connection. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so we built instruments that last very long so we cannot sell that many for, for a long time but we have this really crazy measurements mm -hmm. so like your artist you, you talked about earlier who's playing or he's who's still buying like new vincents because it's the only place he can play because of the crazy measurements <laughs> so that's the trick we have yeah yes. so, no no no. no, it's just the, 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 the material uh -huh. yeah. and it has this really special scent like the smell uh, that it gets from from roasting, mm -hmm. I I know that you don't like it that much. Yeah. Me, for example, I really love it. I really like it. It it, it smells a bit like like a fireplace. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Campfire and smell. Campfire. Yeah. Campfire. And, uh, but then when we finish them with our oil, it gives a really nice and really natural smell. And when you have a new instrument, um, especially the dark roast that is sitting in your room for like a week. The whole room smells from this yeah, like, yes. kind of smoky flavor. I really like it. But, but <laughs> yeah. we do, don't do any special dyes. Uh -huh. We we um, the the production process is exactly the same as with the regular, not roasted maple. So. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? So oh yeah. yeah. Also we can see the beautiful olive wood here mm -hmm. um, as a fretboard. Yeah. And Johannes, uh, you you kind of invented this many years ago and yes, it was a, a really right. nice combination of innovation and pragmatism i would say yes it is yeah i tried to to um to find a way to, to uh, work with two parts not with three so i liked like this idea with a with this, uh, zero fret zero fret yes. and um but then you need a um some some part which guides the strings mm -hmm. and then you need a, another part uh, which um, applies pressure yeah, yeah applies pressure so and this was what was the idea to to, to combine mm. these two parts to one and yeah, i came up with this idea and yeah it, it works very uh, very nice with um with these instruments mm. wow. and it has a one, one simple um advantage when you have like a zero fret and then you use a guide and then you use a string tree to apply pressure, mm -hmm. then you have like three points where friction can appear. And wherever you have friction, you lose tuning stability. And when you combine two parts, the, the string guide and the, 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 the string tree that holds it down, like you have only one point where we have additional friction. And since we um, make this piece of carbon, it has a, it's a really low friction material itself. Mm -hmm. And then you just the zero fret, uh, the zero fret, and the, the the carbon string tree. So you have only two points where friction can appear. So you have really minimized friction. You have less parts, and you have better stability for the tuning. And you have 
easier reactive tuning. So if you compare your tuning process to other instruments, mm. you will uh, immediately recognize that a Vincent bass tunes more smoothly than any other instrument. Mm. I think it, it, I think you should apply for design patent patent for that. Yeah, we yeah, are. So we are. You are more friend, a friend of you. We discussed this. Yes, uh, it, it has to be uh, uh, how to say eco econo economically. So, oh. so it's yeah. Uh, so it's okay, but but that is no good idea. I a little bit afraid that some big company use that system. Then we would. Yeah. Uh, we, we can would, say we well, they copied it from Vincent. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so yeah. Anyways, but I think we we would be either honored, or we we would be really like, oh man, why didn't we patent this? But and I think, as you said before, with all the lawyer costs and all that, if you have a, like going for a worldwide patent, that would cost us so much money. Yes. So I mean, it's and it's not. We, if we would start that, then we the next step would be we have to patent our trust road too because we have a unique trust road design that yes. nobody else in the world does like. Like we do it, yeah. Yeah, and um, that's the reason why our trust road adjustment mechanism really is also working way more smooth than any other. But it's like we discussed it and said, well, we're not starting patent it, and well, if you want to copy it. Mm -hmm. You will have to go through a certain process of being inventive yourself because it's um, like making the special truss rod channel for our specialized truss rod. It really invokes some kind of engineering knowledge and machining knowledge. Mm -hmm. And then I say, whoever has this knowledge and can do it, so go for it. But yes. it's so, yeah. Yeah. first. So it's 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 not easy to copy because it involves some serious wood engineering. Yeah, right. You're you're, you're right. Yeah. If you look at the shape of our truss no, truss rod channel, mm -hmm. it's not a normal channel, but it's like specially shaped. Hmm. And yeah, yeah. It's Normally, not, uh, may, many companies just is square. It's just square. Yeah. yeah. So now you are going to see the secret. Ah. <laughs> so this is the way our truss rod looks. And it fits in like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can re remove the truss rod um, from the neck um, if, if some something is uh, yeah, wrong with it. For example, if you have an, an old traditional built one piece neck and you have a truss, truss rod issue, which mm -hmm. is pretty common, yeah, yeah, come you on. have to, you really have problems, you have to remove the skunk stripe. Uh -huh. So, and in, on a Winston base, you just simply can pull out the truss rod. So, whenever you have a truss rod issue, which is not very probable since these truss rods are made forever, for eternity, uh -huh. you just unbolt the neck. And then you pull out the truss rod. Mm -hmm. Wow! Insert it again, no problem. <laughs> Johannes, uh. what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Are we a bit conservative about this? Yes. Yes. So, um, one one guy was here um, today, and he wanted a, a stacked pickup in stacked. in his um, in his um, um, metropole, and uh, if it's um, the, the same. Um, yeah. The same form factor. Yeah. Form factor, then it's okay. So, what we not do at the moment is um, is, is like a like a humbucker, music metal humbucker, or something like this. So, yeah. And this ha this has a story, right? Because I mean, you you had all this before. Yes. Uh, I remember Trinity. Oh yes, yes. Which had like a really <laughs> crazy electronic, and it could be like split and and face. Uh, face reverse, face yeah. reverse and just like crazy stuff. I mean, you did all this before, and it has a reason why we keep it simple now. And mm. if someone wants to have those like bulky, like huge um, combination, like single coil and humbucker, I mean, I, I've, I've been there, I, I had like instruments with that configuration, but it's just not us. No, no, no. It's, it's okay. still, it's still, the philosophy is 
plug and play. So the more simplistic the instrument yeah. is. And I think there is a reason that all three of us at home, we have an Accurat 4, yes. which is the most simple bass. And it's interesting, all the real pro pro guys <laughs> all who, <of> them. <laughs> who ordered Vincent Bass's life for Ed Sheeran Europe Tour or World Tour, World Tour or, or ABBA Virtual Reality event in London, they all ordered Accurat Force. They all ordered the most basic, simplistic bass that is possible. You just plug it, it sounds great. You don't have to fiddle around with electronics. You won't run out of battery. Yeah. It's just plain and it's just fun to play because it's, it doesn't sound bad because you messed something up. If, if it sounds bad, then you have a bad day. Maybe improve your playing. <laughs> but it's like, it's not worth to spend hours and hours of dialing in sounds take the time and use it for practice That's, <laughs> that will do much better to your sound than fiddling around yeah. with the knobs yeah, just honest wasn't. words Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, a little bit danger <laughs> okay nobody wants to hear that <laughs> no. yeah well okay my cuts are done